Okay, in this tutorial we are going to start looking at what we're doing with the mouth. We've been able to finish off all of the eyes and the brows, and before I go into showing the mouth, I'll just want to show what I've done with the eyes, for instance. Um, so if I take a look at my eye frames, here we can see that these are the um, individual frames that I've created for it. So obviously starting from our uh, neutral frame, and then uh, these were based, all these auto poses were the ones that were automatically created from Facewear based on the auto pose system down here. And then there were several other ones here toward the beginning that I added in manually when I realized that the, um, there were some shapes that were not covered by the auto poses here. And I figured that out by retargeting the system. Um, so for instance, if I were to look at any, any of these controllers here, I can see that I've already gone through and retargeted. I'll play it through here in just a moment to show what, I've, what I have. Um, and a lot of these extra poses were just ones where I didn't really understand what the eyes were doing in terms of the direction that they were looking in. Um, one thing that's worth pointing out is that when creating this pose here, because the eyebrow and the sort of the, the upper skull region here in the brow section started to cover up the eye, um, this pose that I have now for the brow has been adjusted. So I adjusted that based on um, actually looking at what was going on with the eye section here and trying to match that as much as possible. So originally this was actually up much higher um, and I wasn't getting this coverage that I'm seeing uh, here now. So sometimes what you'll have to do is go back and readjust some of the poses that you've made into the other groups when you start trying to factor in the face as a system rather than just in a series of different parts. And that's what I ended up doing in this case here. I also changed the shape overall of the brows a little bit in that one section, um, but now it works better. And yeah, and so then we have our auto poses that I was going through and creating before, uh, things like closed eyes, um, looking over in a different direction, fully closed eyes here. There is a lot of movement, it's worth pointing out, there is a lot of movement of the eyes compressing. So, you know, if I start seeing wrinkles here, it's usually a sign that there are muscles from the cheeks and around the uh, orbit of the eye that are creating squints um, and basic compression. So I'm always paying attention to the direction that the skin is moving on any given um, pose right here. So this is a reason why I'd want to sort of scroll in and out just to see what the skin is doing, what direction is it moving in. And uh, it's not just moving up and down either, it, it does tend to have a motion that's sort of on an, on an angle as well. So those are important things to factor in, right? And um, yeah, and then also seeing these dots here really helps to kind of gauge the general location of things. So if I find an example, I'm trying to see if I can see something here. So you can see between these two here that even these inner dots appear to move a little bit. And um, that's without the head cam moving. So it's probably a sign that there actually is some motion going on there. So those are things for me to pay attention to as well. And definitely here on this pose where there's a lot of compression going on uh, from the brows going down and the cheeks going up, I'm definitely trying to push in using these controllers just around the eyes here to push up and in. Um, and if we watch this now from start to begin, from start to end, I'll, um, I'll leave the markers on just because it's a little bit easier to see how some of that stuff is moving when I do. We can just kind of create a comparison. Now it's not perfect and there definitely is some jitter in there, but the overall motion is pretty accurate to what the original was. It's, in, it's always going to be the case that we're going to end up with some jitter. Um, and those are things that we can go through and start to fix using the graph editor. But you will see that there's a lot of consistent motion going on, um, not just with the eye, eyes opening and closing, but also all the controls around the outside as well, which help to move parts of the, um, the outer parts of the skin and even a little bit around here on the, the lower parts of the brow. So, all right, now that we have that in place, what I'm gonna do is I'll just pop back here to, um, oops, I, don't, I think my mouse has a problem. There we go. I'm gonna pop back here to uh, frame zero and we are going to go into Facewear here. And actually, before we do anything else, we'll just go to file, 
save scene as, and um, we finished this off. This was the 03 eyes file. Now I'm going to save this as a new file called 04, and we'll call it mouth. And that way, just before we begin, we've made sure to save something off so that we'll uh, hopefully not override any of the work that we've done. And we're going to come down here now and work with the mouth. And as I mentioned in um, a previous recording, I've decided to take um, the three controls that we had originally associated with the jaw markers and to just include them in with the overall mouth uh, group. And that's just because it, as I tried to work with the jaw alone when I created this here, I discovered that the um, trying to separate the jaw movement from the mouth movement just was going to be too overly complex and not not necessary. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll go in and I'll grab these jaw markers that I created, or these these jaw poses that I created, and just hit delete. So I'll also delete the keys on them, so that's all good. Um, and this way now we can just go back and look at the mouth alone, um, and that's going to allow us to work with both the mouth and the jaw at the same time. So let's go to the mouth. And we'll start out by saying, hey, give us, I don't know, four auto poses. We'll just need something to start with. All right, and also too, we do, we do want to add in the first one, first frame here at frame zero as our neutral frame. All right, so let's call that neutral frame. All right, so we have uh, frame 12 as our first pose. Now, what is interesting there is that there is a little bit of movement that has happened and it's not clear why there's something here that's being animated. So let's just pop into the perspective cam here and find out why those are moving. That's not what I would typically expect to see, but let's just see here real quick at frame 12. Yeah, there's a number of just controls there. So I'm just gonna select all of those. And in fact, what I'll do is kind of turn off the geometry there and just making sure that I truly see what is in fact moving there. It seems to only happen at frame 12, so that's interesting. Um, all right. So these, oh, I think I know possibly why. Uh, this might be because they're getting rekeyed back to zero. Okay. Um, it's a little bit interesting, but that's because uh, we said that our default values um, when we when we originally set this up inside the character setup file, the default values were zero, and they might get might be getting keyed back to them. So that's not a huge problem necessarily. Um, it is a little interesting, but it's not a huge problem. So what I would do is um, I think what I'll just do is we'll go to frame twelve here. Actually, take our timeline and set it to just 12 frames here. And then we'll turn our geometry back on. We'll go to our mouth view here. And actually what I wanna do is I wanna create a selection set for just the mouth controllers. And so in order to do that, I do actually need to go back here real quick. Let's go in and find all of our mouth controllers. Let's go and grab all of those there. All right, we don't need the tongue necessarily, so we haven't selected those. Um, grab that, grab this, and one group that we didn't work with so far was the nose. So we'll talk about the nose in a little bit. We'll come back to that a little bit later, I think. Um, but we'll also grab the cheek controllers up here because we made those as part of our mouth group. And that should be pretty much everything, I think. So let's go in and just make a selection set from this. So we'll say create uh, sets, quick select set, we'll call this uh, mouth, and add to shelf. And we'll just middle mouse click and drag that over here. And now this way I can make sure I have everything selected there. And now I can middle mouse click and drag from frame zero down to frame 12. And I am just going to go ahead and hit S to key the same pose that I had at zero on 12. And that way, at least I know that my overall shapes of my lips will now be better represented uh, here. So 
Um, that way I'm preserving the original shape that I created at zero. All right, so we do wanna go back and compare, obviously now the changes that are going to occur between here. So what we can see is that the mouth is definitely pulled up a little bit here. Um, the jaw hasn't moved. So, or at least doesn't really seem to have moved too much. It may have gone down a little bit in fact, but um, overall the mouth has primarily moved. So what we need to do is figure out what is the best control for moving the mouth? Is it this big control here? That's one option. Um, what are my other options for moving the mouth around? That's just a lower lip and that's the upper lip. Technically I could move both of those, but it doesn't move the corners. In this case here, if we're comparing back and forth, we are seeing that the sort of it's the whole mouth that's kind of going up and you can do this. I mean, this is definitely something that you can do with your mouth. So let's just take this bigger control here then move this one. It's gonna move it up a little bit. And I th I'm not gonna really move that jaw, I don't think. If I did, if I moved the jaw, what would happen is I start to rotate that out and then I'd have to push the lips up as well individually. I just wanna see what tension is in the lips there. This is a little, sometimes the mouth is one of the trickiest areas to get right. So we're seeing that movement there. What we're not really seeing also though is, let's go ahead and put the face cam here, is that there's a lot of movement that's happening um, along here. So if I were to look at, say this side, all right, so we can see this is kind of like the cheek sort of control here. Um, and I'm just looking at the video here. Uh, there's a little bit of compression inwards and also it's going up. So we would pull that up a bit and probably push it in to give that overall sense of, oops, not on this frame though, sorry. Go back to 12 here. Uh, pull that up and push it in a little bit. And then also moving up this option here. Now, one of the things, unfortunately, that I don't really see as an option here on, on this rig are any real controls that um, sit right along this part of the face. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Now, um, we do have those, we do have these um, cheek controls here, the, the cheek markers that we were following. So I'm just trying to think out loud about what I would want to do with those because on this character here we don't really have much for those markers to do some other characters probably would have more um, and I'm thinking let me just undo what I've just done here step back a little bit there we go because I think anytime that I'm moving these controls here I probably want to associate it with the cheeks group rather than the mouth group again it is kind of separating different parts of the face um, but yeah, there's just different things. I'm, I'm thinking out loud basically as I do, as I am wont to do. So if I go in here to the mouth group, I just want to check to see how much control, how much overall movement does moving this around have versus maybe moving just this big control. So when I move this control up, you'll see that it, dis it doesn't have any effect along the inner cheek here. Right, it just moves the mouth up and down. But that may not be actually giving me what I want. And what I want is to be able to not only have the mouth come up, but then also to affect the cheeks here. So that's an important element when I don't have any other controls here for this section alone. Like I said, you might be working with a different rig that does have those options. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these, oh, let's hold on, before I do that, let me just, Okay, so that's, if I move that up, that's sort of doing that. Okay, so that control's not what I want either. So what, I, what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna grab uh, these four controls around the outside of the mouth, and let's just try pulling those up a little bit. And might have to move them up in different, at different um, amounts. Cause I brought that up there. I was kind of looking at it in a 3D view as well, just to see what effect that gives. 
Uh, sometimes it's just a bit of an exploration. I think overall this is going to be a little bit better than it was um, just using the big outside base control. And there is a little bit of a down corner here, which we could adjust. Um, also, I want to take a look at the width overall. The width has stretched, I think, a little bit there. So if I look at where that corner is, and it's moved over, and actually it's moved over in that direction a little bit. Take a look here. That's definitely moved over there. So I think what's happening here is that the mouth in general is just sort of um, starting to move like this over here a little bit. Let's go back to the mouth uh, there. Take a look at that. And then this one is coming, oops, this one here is coming over here a little bit more. I'm not sure if I want to do this in world mode or not, or object mode. So I set my my moving controls just sort of like that a little bit more. There we go. All right. Pull that up a bit more there. It kind of feels like the lips are sh like showing a little bit more lip here. So at 12, I might start to maybe Pull that over there a little bit more. Same thing on this side. going to push up these corners a little bit more here. I can push that up there, but I might have to adjust the, the line on the inside there a little bit. And what I'm trying to do there is to create um, a very basic sense of compression of the lip. So if I were to go in here and I take a look at these controls that are starting to overlap each other, I start to pull those down a little bit. That might help that a little bit. I'm not sure. I don't really know until I keep trying. So maybe that's okay as it is. This little one here on the edge is really more about just a very localized control of the direction there. And I think overall, this should probably work. So I think that'll be okay. All right, huh. let's just save that and hope that that's good. Um, if we come back here now to the mouth frames, uh, go to 581, a very, very different shape here. Now we actually have things that have been uh, rotated open. Um, I'm gonna go, so 581. Again, I'm gonna go back to frame zero here, uh, select all my mouth uh, shapes and go down to 581, S to key. And now um, let's go ahead and rotate open this jaw. So opening that up fairly wide. We do want to be able to see the teeth, um, both sets of teeth there. So I'm going to find a point at which this feels like it's sitting right. I might need to go to my full face view a little bit more there. I think that could possibly come down just a little bit more there. Uh, what we want is right now, as I pull this down, you'll notice that the mouth kind of evenly comes down on both edges. So if, if I were looking at this, oops, that jaw, for whatever reason, didn't get included in there. It doesn't seem, oh, it did, but at 580. Okay, that's not where we want it. Um, let me go in there real quick and fix that. So. 580, let's go get rid of that frame. Let's copy that across there, key that. 
rid of that there. Somehow I didn't bring those across correctly. All right, cool. Um, so as we look back and forth here, you'll notice that as this rotates open here, the corners of the lips are kind of like right in the middle between the lower lip and the upper lip. But on the face, the corners of the lips kind of sit a little bit higher so that um, the shape that we get down here is a bit longer than the shape that we see up here. What that means basically is that I'm gonna to wanna to pull these up a little bit. So I'll go back to the mouth group there, grab both sides, and pull those up a little bit. Right. And she is also, you know, her lip her lips up here are actually being pulled up as well. It's kind of an O shape. Now some characters will have um controls that will give you an O shape as part of their um, overall uh, creation of either fax shapes or blend shapes. In this case here, I do not believe that this character does, so we have to do it all manually. So I'll go in and play with this. I'll start in the middle first, pull the middle up to begin with. Um, so we want to get that up toward the top of the teeth, not quite to seeing the gums, but toward there. Pull over this edge here and let that come over to the side a little bit more. Okay. What I'm looking at is the coverage of the teeth in general. And that notice that this side is up a little bit higher than the side, so I'll try to represent that here in what I'm doing. Um, this middle part probably doesn't need to come up quite so much because it does kind of flatten out here a little bit. So if we can get that to work a little bit better there, that would be good. Um, what I might be able to do though is to go in and use these smaller controls to do a lot of this work for me. I might be able to take some of this down and just use a lot of these smaller controls instead. So again, it's sort of figuring it out as I go along. And I will probably just take a look at what the mouth is doing here. Um, if we compare this back to the neutral frame, the, the lips have moved inwards, as you can see. So if I put my, my cursor right here and then compare, they definitely moved inwards and down. And this side, oops. Uh, that side, they haven't moved too much, actually. So that's interesting. So we might pull this up a little bit here. That might actually help that shape a little bit there, in fact. But on this side, you can definitely see that there's a lot of movement that's happened. Pull that over there a little bit. It's the interesting thing about dealing with somebody's face is, um, you know, we don't really see all those little minor adjustments until we can kind of create some comparisons here within um, you know, the software. So uh, here we have, you know, wanting to be able to see the, starting to see the teeth there. Start with our major controls first, if we can make those work for us. And what would be nice is probably to get more of a sense this mouth, sorry, by the way, this mouth cam, I could probably adjust its, um, let's go ahead and unlock this here and we're just gonna move it up a little bit. And then we'll relock that. That way we can better see what we're doing here. Move this down and I'll move this back up. It's kind of like a bit of a trade-off. Let's see what we get by doing this. part over there, move that part over there, and move this back up. Just because her lips become so wide here that, yeah, it's interesting actually, it seems like the proportional, the proportional distance here stays the same no matter what I'm doing, so I'm kind of not making any real change there on that middle one. That's all right, it's good to know. Will 
be okay. Um, pull this. I don't want to pull it over too much. So we'll say that that's probably okay. That corner edge there is probably okay. This corner edge here might pull down a little bit. I do feel like that's a bit high, or at least pull the corner edge down a bit. So what does that look like in full on face cam view? Um, I think it could be a bit wider, maybe a little bit wider on the edges. Like that, so you're starting to get that little angle there a little bit more nicely. Yeah, something like that. Seems to be pretty good. Um, I mean, I probably could try to roll this lip up a little bit more here, maybe. There's a little bit more of a snarl. A little more character there. Okay, you can go with that. So I'll save that. And and we'll continue on to our next one at 621 here. Okay, so again, we're just gonna come back down to zero. Actually, we'll open it up to 621. Come back down to zero. Um, just taking the neutral frame. Middle mouse click and drag that down to 621. Make sure that I've selected the mouth controls and key those. All right, so hopefully did I go back down. Yep, yeah, I did, good. Okay, so this one is more of a um, kind of a, not a football shape, but what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the teeth have the right distance between each other. And that basically means that they're pretty much just about touching. We might not be able to totally see that until we bring down the lips a little bit there. So I'm just bringing that down to start with so I can better see what's happening there. So maybe right about there-ish, there-ish. Um, just temporarily bringing that down. And when I can't really adjust this exactly the amount that I want, I sometimes will just hit the, um, the like plus and minus keys I'll make my controller a bit bigger and I find that this usually allows me to have more fine scale adjustment. And then I can go back to minus to make it a little bit smaller there. Okay, um, now this overall shape. So we're trying to, actually looking at the large shapes first, let's look at the corner edges of the mouth. Uh, so comparing Comparing to our neutral frame, we'll see that there's a little bit of a push in here. Not as much on this side. Seems to be a lot more movement on Daria's, this corner of Daria's mouth than on this corner. So that's kind of interesting to know. So we'll push that in a little bit there. This side, not so much, but I'll push it in just a slight amount. Okay. And now I want to go in and kind of roll this out a little bit here. Might pull this up now a little bit. As we try to get the shape. Now that one of the things that we will want to do is to try to get also, let's see if it's possible to get um, what we call sticky lips going on here. And the sticky lip is where we see um, the lips still through adhesion still kind of um, holding together there, even though she's starting to part them. And it is a control that we have on a lot of um, animated characters. I don't know if it exists on this one. Hopefully it does at some level. Um, but let's go in here and see what we can do about that. So I'll just pull this up and over a little bit on this side. It doesn't need to be up too high here. And we just need to kind of start pulling down this overall shape along the edges. Usually, the upper lip overlaps the lower lip. 
So when in doubt, if I was coming in here, for instance, if in doubt, and I was pulling these up, for instance, I'd want to make sure that the upper lip just feels like maybe it's a little bit in front of the lower lip. So I might push one back more than the other. Something like that, we're starting to get that overall shape. You can see these little, these minor controls here can be quite useful. And getting exactly the right shape that we're going after. go in with the perspective view here to see this other side. And again, pulling this out a little bit on top, pushing it in a little bit on bottom, like that. And yeah, so let's just go in and take a look at that mouth cam again. We can see the teeth here a little bit more, so let's try to see if we can open this out on that side maybe a little bit more. Never going to be perfect, it's never going to be an exact match, but we can see what we can do. All right, now we don't actually want necessarily this curve here so much. I'm sort of overstated that, I think, because I was trying to make this, the lips look a little bit stickier there. And probably the same thing on this side, open that up a little bit more. All right, so not perfect, but not bad either. And I'm just gonna quickly look to see if I can find a sticky lips control on this character. All right, um, I'm not seeing the kind of controls that I'm looking for for that. I'm not sure that they exist on this character, sadly. Um, so it's all right, we'll try to work without them. And if you have um, a character rig with sticky lips controls, you'll usually find them on probably on the corner lips here or on a larger um, mouth control, one of the larger scale mouth controls. I'll probably say something like sticky or lip corner or something like that. And those are worth adjusting just to try to get that kind of shape of the closure of the lips around that adhesion point. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll save that there. And then 718 is our last, oh, 718 happens to be this shape here, which I'm not too worried about trying to define. Um, and what I would do then is, because there are so many different shapes for the mouth, I would go in, I'm not gonna delete 718 because if I delete it and I go to get some more auto poses, it's just gonna go back and recreate 718. So I'll just say, hey, give me give me four more of these auto poses. I'll delete, I'll delete 718 um, momentarily after we've gone through all these. So I might go ahead and um, delete it now, for instance. All right, so let's take a look at these other ones that have been created. Uh, 365, that's one we haven't defined yet. Uh, 708, uh, 708 is another one of those problematic poses. So um, anything that goes on in this region here with the fingers coming across, I'm just gonna delete that one as well. Um, so 1406, it's got this very sort of O or O shape and even more so there at 1414. So what I would do here is, is, is just kind of continue on in the same way that I have been doing this. I don't think I necessarily need to go through and um, create a bunch more shapes here on video just because it eventually just kind of it seems like I'm beating a dead horse. But what I am trying to do is in each of these shapes, I'm trying to pay attention to what is the first off, what is the distance between the teeth, right? I'm trying to get that distance right to begin with. And then uh, what is the proportional distance between the teeth and the lower lip and the teeth and the upper lip, for instance? Um, 
And then how much has the jaw moved? Because the mouth may uh, move up and down, but also you gotta pay attention to is the jaw moving as well. So you may get to a point where the jaw has, has actually moved, right? So you may find that the jaw has rotated down here, for instance, a little bit while the rest of the mouth just sort of stays kinda looking like it's closed even, right? So that's not the, I mean, this is not an example of that right here, but there may be a pose where the mouth is, the whole mouth region is moving down while the jaw is also sort of moving down. Um, so those are things to also be paying attention to, is to always pay attention. How, how much has this moved compared to this? And um, again, too, paying attention to um, how much movement is occurring here in the overall um, lip region leading up into the nasolabial fold as much as you can tell. Um, I think I'm still going to leave the cheeks to uh, trying to trying to define the cheeks as much as possible um, on their own. So for instance, um, I'm going to use the cheek face group here to work with these controllers, that controller there and that controller there and there and there to drive um, overall movements in the cheeks. Although, like I said, there's it doesn't quite give me as much control over here as I would like. So unless I'm somehow able to find some additional controls on this character, I think that's just what I'm limited to. Um, and it's always very character dependent in that sense. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna stop the tutorial there for now because I don't, um, I, what I'll do is I'll, once I finish off the rest of this section, I'll go in and I'll talk about um, what decisions I've made. Undoubtedly, at some point, I'll have to go through here on the mouth section and start scrubbing through my um, my whole performance and looking at the various uh, shapes that haven't yet been defined by the auto poses and I'll define some of them by adding them in manually as well, just like I did with the other um, other face groups here. So. But we'll wait for that to later. And for now, I'll just say thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.